couple minutes late here, but I'll try to get it all done. Am I good to go, Cal? Yep. Okay. All right, well, hi. I'm Liz from Mancio's VIP Mortgage. I saw a lot of your faces earlier, so I'm back. Um, I am not John Chuplack, clearly, um, but I was lucky enough to hear him uh, about two weeks ago for three hours. It was like a personal coaching session with about 30 of us. Um, I have been coached by him like five times over the last four years, and he's made a huge impact in my business. Um, and a lot of the top teams that we work with have been coached by him as well. And my home group has been coached by John Chuplack, and he was instrumental in the growth of my home group. I don't know if you guys know that, but um, who is he? Uh oh, it's not working. This is him. I don't look anything like him, do I? So he's a very um, intense, athletic, physically fit, you know, empowered guy. He's very, very passionate, intense, um, and he's a coach, an author, a speaker. Um, he coaches some of the top teams in the world and brokerages and broker owners. It's pretty incredible. He rattled off all the names of the people that he coaches um, and teams and they're, you know, the number one Remax team in all of South America, the number one Remax team in Europe, the number three brokerage in the United States, you know, all these crazy accolades he has. Um, and he charges $1,200 an hour for his coaching. So I went to it and I took six pages front and back of notes and tried to put them together into this presentation today. So we're not going to get all of it, but I tried to find the best bullet points and talk to you guys. And the goal is, um, I'm gonna send you the PowerPoint too because there's tons of good nuggets and everyone's gonna find value in something different. That's what I learned. There was 30 of us. We all kind of found different takeaways for our business depending on where we're at. So find three today that you can take away and implement in your business and change. Um, so make sure you're in the sign-in sheet. I'll email you the whole presentation. But first I want to click so you can see him in action to kind of get an idea of who he is um, I mean, hopefully you'll be able to hear him through the TV. Hey, good morning, everyone. It is uh, a beautiful day, about 6 a.m. here in Las Vegas. It feels great to be 50 and a grandpa. Whoa. Yeah. Anyways, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you that reached out the uh, wonderful, thoughtful messages. I appreciate it so, so much. Um, anyways, you know, what I wanted to share with you this morning as I pop down here at, uh, gosh, it's 7 p.m., it's 6 a.m., I'm going to fly out, and, you know, I'm in the throes of a very, very busy time frame. In seven days, I'll do Columbus, Ohio, Seattle, Las Vegas, South Carolina is tonight at midnight for a three-day mastermind on a, a mountain. Uh, and, you know, it's very interesting. The one thing that I hear from people over and over again is they don't have time. I don't have time for my fitness. I don't have time for fun. I don't have time for my family. Think about it. But I have time to go chase a shitload of money. Gotta make that money. And gotta have those things. And we're so trapped. And you know, here's what I'd like to suggest to you is you know, reverse engineer things. I mean, keep chasing money. You're going to keep chasing money. It's like, I'm too busy is a badge of honor. I mean, think about that. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. But I can buy my way out of things. I mean, society has this program that way. Well, you know, you can't buy the love of your family. No. You can't buy your fitness and your health. And you'll pay in the end. Um, can you buy fun? Well, sure, you can buy fun experiences. I mean, I sincerely hope that you're working to live, not living to work. You know, it's one of those things where people talk about you know, time management. Time management is a myth. It's the biggest lie on the planet. It's choice management. You know, I made a choice to fly down here and have dinner with my daughter and then to meet with my son at midnight after he got off work at 24-hour fitness and check him again. He's a 21-year-old young man. It's okay, so I'm going to pause it, but you get the idea. So he's raw, he's real, he curses, he's got a lot to handle, big personality for some people, but he has some amazing, amazing wisdom that I'm going to share with you guys. Any, what did you guys notice about that video? What is it not? Professional. Correct. 
So he's also a huge proponent about being authentic and personal, and that's the best way to create a human connection. So we're going to talk a lot about that in the next hour. So let's get back to it. So he, before he gets into business building, he thinks that you really have to understand human behavior because he believes we're not selling real estate. We're in the human connection, human development, human attraction business. And if you get better at connecting with people and attracting people, your business will in turn grow as well. Um, and by the way, I'm gonna fly through this. I'll send it all to you guys. Um, but that he says is the first and foremost thing he wants agents to think about. Before you think about how to make your business better, think about that. How can I get better at connecting with people and attracting people to me? And then your business will grow. He also stresses all the time that overtraining and overthinking is the biggest problem in our business. It causes paralysis. And so he says, instead of continually thinking about what you need to do to get better and grow, just focus on one thing that you're going to do and do it well. And keep doing it every day and stick to it and your business is going to grow. Um, so yeah, simplify things and focus on the only thing that matters, which he believes is people. And if you focus on people first, before sales, before your processes and systems, um, again, it'll, it'll yield tremendous results for your business. And then this is another takeaway that I loved. The only reason that agents or teams or companies stay stuck is because they focus on the wrong thing. And I think that is really important. So by focusing again on first and foremost, people, how to get in front of more people, deliver a better message to people, everything else will come behind it. So we're gonna dive right into some of the great marketing stuff that he talks about, which I really love. And it's basically change your whole marketing mindset. <laughs> Everything that the normal real estate agent does for marketing is wrong, is what John Chuplock says. Um, his main slogan is don't market to the 5% of people who are ready to buy and sell, market to the 95% who aren't. Because he believes that the majority of agents chase, pay money for online leads, spend open houses, blah, 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 doing all these things for the 5% of people but they forget about the 95. And there's some agents that are good at that with their sphere and things like that. But as an agent, you should constantly focus on growing your audience to get in front of more people, right? More of that 95%. So um, we're gonna give some tips on that. So at any point in time, he believes there's either 5% of the people on the planet that are consumers uh, that are in the consideration phase. So those are people, the 5% of people that are considering buying or selling a house. But again, where are the 95%? They're not considering buying a house, selling a house right now, but they're gonna need to sometime in the next three to five years. So it's staying in front of those people, making your marketing important enough and relevant enough that they pay attention and keep listening to you. Um, so he wants you to change your audience to these people, the 95% that are indifferent, that don't really care about buying or selling right now, um, so you're not trying to sell those people. You're simply just trying to get them to like you, right? And build a relationship. So he says, when you run your sales pitch of people, they become annoyed. They're going to stop listening to you because you become a nuisance. Um, so we got to reframe our whole marketing mindset on how we talk to that 95% of people. This is an analogy he gave that I loved. Everyone is fishing in the red ocean, shooting with the same target or shooting the same target with the same arrow and there is blood in the water. So, and he gave perfect examples. So the average home buyer gets content, gets sold as a lead to five different agents besides their own agent. And I know this for sure because I was, I look on Zillow all the time lately. I, we just bought a second home up north and I probably get now seven emails a day from Zillow, realtor.com. Every day I get calls from agents that I'm working so I don't answer. So I have all these voicemails. Hey, it's so-and-so with Keller Williams. Just saw you were searching online. If there's anything we can help you with, let me know. So Zillow was selling my information to all these other agents, you know, so your, your consumers are the same, your database. So you have to do something different than that, right? Um, and keep those people in your database listening to you. And he says that's, you know, most agents basically do the same thing, say the same thing. So how do, how do, we, how do we be different? Um, and again, the greatest opportunity for more money over a sustained period of time is with that 95% of people. That's how you grow a massive referral-based real estate enterprise is if you could actually learn how to do this um, and this was something that he said that was really cool that kind of goes into the social stuff we'll get in later but think of how much money pay for people pay advertisers pay for a 30 second commercial during the super bowl it's crazy right they pay like seven million dollars for a 30 second commercial more people log into facebook at 8 p.m every day 
than watch the Super Bowl. So that's something to keep in mind about like marketing is changing and where consumers are watching is changing. So we need to change with them. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about video with this as well. Um, so again, he believes that if you're blowing it with the consumer, if you're not getting opportunities with consumers, it's your messaging. You got to change your messaging to be different than what everyone else says, because otherwise it's just noise and they're going to ignore you. Um, and he says, if you have the wrong, you can have the wrong audience with a really, really, really good message and it will find the right audience. And then those people will share it with other people. So that's how we see like the things on Facebook that go viral, right? It's one video that gets posted and shared and shared and shared and shared and shared. Why is that? It's not because necessarily the best, most amazing produced content ever. It's because it's content that speaks to people incite some sort of emotion in them, whether it's humor, that's what we see a lot on Facebook. Humor, passion, anger, frustration, whatever it is, it makes, it incites some sort of emotion in people, and that's why all of a sudden in three days, millions of people see it on Facebook. A lot of times it's inspiration, whatever it is. So, um, you have to find ways to make your messaging that same way. And his slogan is message to market match, meaning create your messaging um, to the 95% of people who you want to be your clients long term. And with that, you're going to sound less salesy, you're going to sound less desperate, you're going to be different than all the other agents out there, and it'll help you grow your business. Um, so with that, one of the ways he encourages it is a video. How many of you guys do video on a regular basis? That's usually, wow, so good. Starting Kudos to you. Teams. Yeah. And our teams, are you guys on teams that probably require it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was just going to say. So the majority, um, I coach right now 15 real estate agents and none of them did video on a regular basis before because it is really uncomfortable for most people. They don't like it. I don't like it. Nobody likes it to see yourself on video, but it is the most powerful thing in marketing. And he says it's going to be even more so going forward in the next five years. So he says, if you are not going to adopt video at this point in your business, it's really going to be detrimental for your growth going forward. And the reason why is it's all psychology. And this is one thing that I wish that I could be him and do, say it the way he says it because it's pretty powerful. But um, he, you know, the, the human brain cannot differentiate between a floating head on a movie screen versus a, a head on a TV or a computer or wherever. Meaning you become a celebrity when you do video in people's minds. It's the whole reality TV phenomenon. They took all these people who weren't famous, put them on TV, and all of a sudden they're famous, right? It's the same thing with you. And if you can create that same subliminal psychological thing with your clients, your audience, your database, you become their celebrity in real estate, their go-to person. So video is so powerful for all the psychological reasons, and this one, um, a lot of it is body language, so people can see your body language, your tone, your demeanor. Um, and he said, you know, your competition is doing a phone call, a text, an email, a handwritten thank you card. Can you read body language in any of those? How many times have you sent a text or received a text that you've misinterpreted, right? Based upon written communication, that happens. But in video, it's a lot less likely that that can happen because people hear you and see you and hear your tone. Um, so if you send a video, when in a normal circumstance, when you would send a text, email, whatever, you're going to win out 100% of the time. So we're going to give you some examples, like actual practical examples for that. But one is after an open house. How, do all of you do open houses in here, I hope? <laughs> okay, good. So open houses, after an open house, instead of putting them in your open house drips and your CRM and getting the automated emails from you, what about picking up your phone and saying, Hi, John, it's Liz. Awesome meeting you today. I hope that this was your dream house, but if not, know that I'm always here as your real estate resource. I'd love to answer any questions you have for me. Feel free to reach out. Here's my contact info. Text that to him, you know, that person you had a good conversation with. Because guess what? Now you've just validated and put a deposit into the relationship, and it's more likely that he's going to remember you the next time. Even after he goes to three open, other open houses that day and forgot your name, when you send him that video, he's gonna say, oh yeah, I remember her, she was nice, she was helpful. I like her. And video, text, text, people open, right? Because if you don't look at them, they stay on your phone. It's not like email where they just delete, delete, delete. If somebody gets a video text, you're probably gonna open it, right? I would, well, I would think all of you would. If you get a video text, you're gonna open it. Consumers are the same way. So try that. 
This I thought was crazy. So they've done all these studies and one minute of video equals 1,600,000 of written words as far as impact on the human brain. That's crazy, right? So think about all the emails. We just email, 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 email people. One video equals that. So what is your time better spent? Sending emails, cold emails to people that probably aren't going to convert or trying video? Yeah, don't you think? Um, so this is a cool study. The Nielsen Rating Company, they're the ones who decide what the value of time on TV is for commercials and advertisers. They found that adding five seconds of video, brand recall goes up 35%, name recognition goes up 35%, and qualifying people to buy is up 37%. If you go to 10 seconds of video, that all goes up into the 40 plus percent range. And that's why if you notice, the way commercials and advertising is all video driven now. It's, it's very different than it used to be. Um, and that's why these studies can keep saying that. But with video, don't overproduce it. People want someone who's authentic and real um, that they can connect to. And you'll notice that because he gave a great example. Anyone know of like the Dollar Shave Club videos? Have you guys ever seen those? So all of a sudden that Dollar Shave Club company came out of nowhere. Um, I have a stat in here somewhere. It would, the video cost them $980 to make and he helped them with it. $980 video, it produced $11 million in income. Because all of a sudden, by that one video, it connected with people, it was memorable, it was different, it was authentic, it was not overproduced like a regular television commercial, and it worked. So that was a cool example, I thought, of ways of, of a video that's really powerful. So the question is, what do I say to video, right? I think do you, all of you guys kind of feel that way. Well, I don't, I don't know what, what I'm going to say. What, what do I say? So he believes that most agents that do video are doing them wrong. And normally they go something like this. Hi, I'm Liz Hermansky with VIP Mortgage. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about home buying. And the first thing we're going to talk about, you know, they, you immediately go into introducing yourself and all of that. And he says, immediately you fail because you have three seconds to capture someone's attention. And do you think they care about me? No, they don't care about me at the beginning. They don't care who I am. <laughs> they just want to hear if what I have to say is relevant. So they care about themselves. So they're going to decide within three seconds whether or not they want to continue to watch your content. So you have to make the first three seconds powerful. So here's the blueprint he gives for amazing videos. He says it's five steps. Um, I'm going to kind of give an example in a minute, but at the beginning, the first step is open a loop of curiosity. So ask a question that's relevant to them and that you're going to answer in the video or make a compelling statement. So an example of that would be like, um, would you like to know how an agent made a million dollars in commission in his first year? If somebody started a video with that, would you say, well, I want to know. That's a compelling statement that gauges interest, right? Or um, for, you know, for, an age, for you guys, if you're looking for consumers, what about something like, did you know that you can purchase a home by just paying for your inspection and your appraisal? Like so starting at something like that. I mean, most people would say, wow, I didn't know that. There are there ways. And then obviously you're going to tell them how to do it through the video. But you have to really get them engaged within the first three seconds. So that's the best way to do it. Secondly, you do want to introduce yourself briefly, who you are. Um, third, talk to them like a second grader. And I thought this one was really funny. But he thinks that those type of videos really keep people engaged because you're not talking over them, you're not talking fast. Um, it's You're giving them information slowly and in a clear and concise way that they can understand, similar to what a teacher does. And it works. You know, teachers have created their messaging to speak to students in a way that most people can understand. So think of it that way when you're relaying the information. Um, next, you're going to future pace or foreshadow them. So you're going to tell them what, basically why they want to stay for the end. And usually that means leaving the most important information until the very end of the video. So he says if you're going to tell them three tips on for first time home buyers, you go number three tip, number two tip, number one tip and tell them the most important thing last. 
um, and then educate them. So you hit all the bullet points or whatever you promised to tell them, you tell them, and that's it. You don't have a call to action. So he says another reason most agents fail is because at the end they try to sell. And he, the point of a video is not, or these type of videos is not to sell, it's to keep people watching your next video and then your next video so that when they are ready to buy, you're their go-to. Um, so he says at a maximum, do a call to action every fourth to fifth video, which is different than what most people do. So usually you hear at the end, if you have any questions or need any real estate information, contact me at this, 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 don't do that, just end it. Thanks for watching, have a great day, be done. Because the goal is keep them, to come and keep them coming back, keep them wanting more. So like this was an example of a script he gave. Um, did you know you could buy a house with as little as 3% down? Well, good news, I'm gonna tell you. I'm Liz Hermansky with VIP Mortgage, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you the three tips on how to do this. Tip number three, you know, whatever it is. And then tip number two, and then obviously, last tip due to this, and thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Tune into my next video. That's it. Short, sweet, less than two minutes, don't try to sell. Kind of, it's different, right, than normal. So the introduction never should come right at the beginning. It should be value proposition first and then don't do the sales pitch at the end. So again, important question or statement leading at the beginning. Um, get, you know, in the first three seconds, capture their attention and keep the video under two minutes for any video. Um, again, some more reasons of why to do video. Um, oh, did I already have this? Oh, no, I didn't. So we already said, yeah, 50% of the impact of all communication is body language, but with video, it builds psychological and emotional connections, just like we talked about. And that's why they take these people that were no, you know, no one, nobody knows and put them on reality TV shows. And then all of a sudden, guess what? People feel like they know them. They feel connected to them. They care about them. Oh no, they're breaking up, you know? And then all of a sudden they're on the cover of all these magazines. It's because human, the, the, pop culture, most people in the consumer world care. They feel emotionally connected to these people after watching on TV. So the same thing with you. The more you do video and stay in front of your audience, the more people will feel emotionally connected to you. Um, the most powerful converting videos are the casual selfie walking around videos. And he's proven this with all of his real estate teams. So they've tried the sitting down at a desk. They've tried the ones where it is produced. Um, and he says the best ones are the impromptu, not scripted ones where you're, you know, walking into a new listing, walking into an open house, uh, working with a consumer and getting a testimonial on the spot, whatever it is, the ones that appear to be just random videos, even if they're not, you can kind of put some thought behind it, but you want it to appear like you just are so comfortable that you just went Facebook live and got on a video and it wasn't planned. It wasn't scripted. So he thinks, we talked a lot about frequency of video. Um, video should be two minutes, as I said, or less, once a week at a minimum. So if you're gonna incorporate video into your world, it needs to be a regular thing that you're gonna adopt and give it a try. And he said it's gonna take a while for it to work, um, probably six months, I would say, before you really start seeing results of video, but then it's gonna grow exponentially after that. And there's an agent here, Steve Panate, who is a perfect testament to that. So Steve made video his number one prospecting method, and he gets now almost all of his business from it, from referrals from people watching his videos, which is crazy. And he just, he committed to it. He did produce one once a week. Um, and now I think, so he's only been an agent for two years, and I, he's one of the you know top agents at my home group. I think he did 54 transactions all by himself last year. No assistant, no transaction coordinator or anything. So he's doing great business, which is awesome, from video. So it does work, but you have to be consistent and you have to stay with it. Um, so this was a question somebody asked and this was his answer. So somebody asked, what about spam? Aren't you, you know, aren't people gonna get annoyed like my Facebook group network that I'm giving, putting out so many videos? And he's like, nope, spam is not a frequency issue, it's a content issue. So if people are getting annoyed by your videos, it's because your content isn't what they wanna hear about. So that's where then engage your network and ask them what they wanna hear about, right? So in a video, put a video out there, quick little selfie walking around like, hey, happy Friday, I'm super curious. You know, as, I, as you know, I always wanna be a resource for you. What do you guys wanna know about the home buying or selling process? What questions can I answer for you? Comment below. And they'll comment, they'll tell you what they wanna hear about 
and then produce videos on those and tag thanks to John for giving me this idea for this great video. So he thinks again, so it's not about how often, it's about the quality of content. So the goal um, for when you're sending a video via email like BombBomb Bomb, is that you want 40% plus open rates. If you're not getting those kind of open rates when you're sending video regularly via email, um, your, your videos probably, again, it's a content issue. So you want to try to boost the content, make them shorter, um, or a stronger hook at the beginning to get people to pay attention. And um, the goal, again, is not to sell them in the video. So you take sales completely out of it. You're trying to move them from a customer journey to a consumer journey. Meaning, does anyone understand, what do, you, what do we think that means? Customer journey to consumer journey. Anyone want to guess? Turn them into a buyer. But, so, but customer could be a buyer too. Longevity. Yes, exactly right. So he says the mindset is that they don't, they're not watching their, your videos right now to use you today. They're watching your videos to educate them over a lifetime for you to be their real estate resource. So they're thinking, and then they will refer you. That's the goal. But like, you're their person. Um, and all you need them to do, again, you're not trying to get them to buy or sell from you today. You're just trying to get them to make a micro commitment, micro commitments, which we're going to talk about at the end, um, by viewing some of your content. Meaning, if they make a micro commitment and watch one video, now they're bought in a little bit more into your business. And if they watch the next video, they're a little bit more bought in. And then it's just over time, the psychological... Um, reactions of watching that much video over time basically result in longevity with them and that's how your database grows and grows and grows and then referrals come in from different directions without having to pay for them which is helpful um, he talks a lot about communication versus connection and he really tries to stress that it's not what we say you know necessarily always is more it is important but you're really trying to connect with people in general. Back to that human connection business. Um, and he talks about ways that videos can do it. Um, so again, we talked about send a video text ever after every open house, send a video after every single listing presentation. You can send videos, which I've started doing in my business for happy birthdays to people. So on, I go on Facebook in the morning, I check my birthday notifications. If there's anybody that's important or in my sphere, top 150, I take my phone out, hi Tracy, happy birthday. Sometimes I sing if it's a person that's really close to me, but just, you know, like, I just wanted to let you know I was thinking of you, I hope you have an awesome day, I'd love to get together soon for coffee, whatever it is, say something, you know. But how different is that? I'm probably the only person that sent them a video text on their birthday. They probably got 200 Facebook no notifications, they probably got 30 texts and 10 calls and 20 emails but probably one video text. So again, it's just a way to set yourself apart from the world. Um, now, he talks about, you know, somebody asks, well, what's the point of doing video if I'm not trying to direct people back to my business? And again, they asked about, well, if you're only doing a call to action every four videos, how can people find me? So he said, you can do subtle calls to action where you're not asking or telling them to do anything but just like if you like more, more information feel free to reach out to me find me on my facebook page just like subtle those are very subtle non-invasive calls to action um but yeah go over to our business page and check out some more of the business build, building tip videos give me a call and i'll be happy to help you out something like that but that's different than the question most agents ask which is what who's brave what do most agents, when you talk to somebody or like ask for a referral or what, what questions? Do you know anybody that's in the buyer class? Ding, ding, ding. So that's what almost, that's the go-to agent phrase, which don't say it. <laughs> it's always just like, yeah, if you know anybody ready to buy or sell, please refer them over to me. I'd be happy to take care of them. You know, that's exactly what most agents say. Don't do that. Just do a subtle call to action, and it's implied, right? But it's different than what every other agent says. And it's just the same, you know, it, that's exactly right, Jermaine. I feel it. I'm glad you got that. Good job. Um, so subtle call to action versus what everyone else does, which is the common stuff. Um, he talked a little bit. So somebody was asking about, mm -hmm. you know, posting videos on Facebook and boosting and all this stuff. So um, he 
the, and it's funny because like three years ago when I listened to his coaching session, he said, you have to put the buttons on the Facebook boost and Facebook ads, the, the learn more or contact us. Now, no buttons. <laughs> so he said, the button is the objective. And if you tell Facebook that you want people to click the button, they're gonna put it in front of an audience who's more likely to click the button. There's like, they know who's button clickers and who's not. But if you take the button off, because they want your money, right? They know that if more people click the button, they get more of your money. So Facebook, that they learn. But if you take the button off, um, it changes the objective to video views. So they're gonna put it in front of more people who are likely to watch your video, which is what you want to grow your audience. So that was a cool takeaway I liked. Um, he said, absolutely never bring videos over from YouTube to Facebook. Anyone know why? It's not good content. They hate each other. <laughs> yeah. So um, they, yeah, they do not like each other at all. So if you pull, if you post your video on YouTube and push it to Facebook, Facebook will not show it to anyone. So you have to post it to Facebook, post it to YouTube. It's a little bit extra work, but it does work better. Um, and this is also important information. So if you boost a post or do an ad, and it does it, it was rejected for some reason, which has been happening a lot lately. Um, Facebook changed all their laws for advertising, and now I've been even getting ones where it says it's like a fair housing issue and oh, all these things. Have you guys seen that? I, I read about it yeah. on Facebook. It's crazy. So I had there, uh, one of the agents here, Craig Harland, got one that they said it was pornography or something crazy because it was a picture of a little girl sitting in front of a house like fully clothed a little girl but like you know a cute little picture of a little girl in front of a house like buy your family a new house and it got rejected for that so Facebook's rejecting for all sorts of weird reasons and the fair housing one is really common I've had it do it to a lot of my ads personally but I just you know, tweak it or try to get it to run or oftentimes I'll make a copy and tweak it but I leave the one that was rejected in there don't leave it in there. Facebook, your ads all get scored based upon Facebook's algorithms and um, it affects your score. If the ones that were rejected by Facebook get a zero and then that affects all of your other ad scores as well. So any that don't work or any that are low performing, delete those completely out of there. Even if you wanna refer back to them as, as an example, which sometimes is why I do it, um, but it all affects your advertising score. So take those out. So I thought that was an interesting tip. Um, another tip that he said is when you post, read the first sentence and ask yourself, so what? Because he says so many people are so quick to post everything, right? Which is what we were told for a while. Just put more content out there. The more content, the better. And then Facebook algorithms all change that it's not about the, the quantity of content as much as it is the quality of content. So now, he says, in order to make yourself relevant on Facebook, it's about if people care about what you're saying. So don't just post to post. He says, now everything you post, you need to be careful about every single word you post in there. I think we're gonna talk about that. And yeah, like you need to have an initiative. It better be something that you're proud to put up. And if you post it and it's a flop, delete it also, because that affects your engagement score. So if it gets six, seven likes, 25 likes, delete it. You no, know, all of that affects your relevancy score from Facebook. Um, now, more on communication versus connection. So he, and we're gonna talk a little bit about this later, but he was saying how, instead of saying, I have programs for first time home buyers, use a script like this. If you're like most first time home buyers, you're afraid and you probably don't trust real estate agents because you probably had a bad experience and you don't like salespeople. I agree and I understand. But let me tell you a story about Sally. Sally felt the same way until she discovered the one thing that we do, you know, whatever it is, that just felt the same way until she discovered that we could help her get into a house with no money down, or we could help her, she didn't need 20% down to buy a house or whatever it is. Once we did that thing or whatever it was that you said, this is what happened to Sally and tell her story. So what's the difference in the messaging? Anybody? It's about them. Exactly right. So in everything now on Facebook, we're gonna talk about story branding in a bit here. Story branding is ruling social media right now. And it's basically about, you try to, you try to get people to connect with your messaging through stories and telling stories about other people where they think, oh, that could be me, or oh, I, that's happened to me, or oh, that's funny. But it's about 
helping them figure out what, you know, relate it to themselves. Um, so every post, instead of congrats to my sellers, we got full price offer in three days, tell a story about that process, about those sellers. You know, Tom and Linda were scared to sell in our crazy market right now. They weren't sure, you know, they want, had a price they were set on. And we were so thrilled that we were able to get them that price and got multiple offers in three days. It's, it tells a story and then people can say, oh, I relate to Tom and Linda. But it looks a lot better than, oh, I just sold my client's house in three days, right? It takes it, it's not about you bragging, it's about you helping and you tell the story of your clients over what you did. Um, so basically the way that he says to do that is create common ground in a pain or a challenge. That's what people can relate to. So start the post off with that. Um, he also says that copywriting is super important and it's important that you speak in your own tone and voice, um, but you have to make sure that your words matter because Facebook checks every single word now of your posts. Um, so the ones that are highest performing by like double are the story type content. Um, and Longer copy, it used to be, don't put long copy, now it's put long copy. So the longer you wanna enter, have like different paragraphs almost in the post, um, it gets people to find ways to relate to the story. So the more detail, the better now with uh, the story branding type um, marketing. Are hashtags working still? They are. Yeah, we're gonna talk, I think he talks about that in here, and if not, I'll send it to you, but they are definitely working still. Um, but they have to be creative and different and relevant. And so that's what he said. Most of the agents do the same stuff, right? So you have to create, he says the ones that work are when you create a tagline for yourself, your business, um, a tagline for the story, um, not like, you know, Phoenix real estate, hashtag Phoenix the home sales, hashtag. The purpose of a tagline is for to grow your audience. to like search that, that tagline, but if you're making up a tagline, obviously no one's gonna type it in. Correct, but um, it, they will. Like the goal is that then it becomes your tagline. It's kind of exclusive to you because right now, um, and there's different apps like Hashtagify is one that helps you create it. There's a bunch of different sites that tell you which hashtags would work best for your objective. Um, like for real estate, it gets all the most common ones. But the problem is, is that then when, you know, 20,000 people have used that hashtag, how likely are you to be in the first 15 on Instagram? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why using a little more uncommon one that may, it still relates, but is different than what they've heard, it will create them to click on it. And if you've used it, then it will be all of your content versus well, no, I'm just everyone say, else. If you're making up random stuff, usually people search hashtag, like if I want to find a, a Phoenix realtor, they would type in hashtag Phoenix Realtor. Obviously, if you're making up something, the consumer's not going to know what's made up. That's true. Um, so I guess I was, he was talking more about creating a brand for yourself long term. Okay. Okay. But um, hashtags do still work. Just he said, don't use the same ones all the time. So be checking in to see which ones are working, which ones are not, which ones are relevant. Um, and yeah, but you need to have a lot. So yeah, they are working, but more people are doing them. So again, it's just about consistency with them and being a little bit different. Um, so again, you know, we talked about this already a lot, but video for work, the formula for video, educate, demonstrate, inform, not sell, not, you know, sometimes the funny video works, but not for most people. Um, and again, the first three to, ten, three to 10 seconds of your video is what's the most important when you're trying to connect with people. Um, this one, I thought was awesome. He talked all about, he talked a lot about data and how data is our most important thing that we can get on people these days. You know, the more information you can get about people, the better. You can get a lot through Facebook, but he says when you've actually spent the time creating content, you want to repurpose it as many places as possible to maximize the exposure. So he said, make a video, post it on your business page and then boost it to the audience that you're looking for, your desired audience. It can be a $5 boost. It doesn't need to be a lot. Um, the algorithm will find the people. So it used to be like three years ago, target, 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 target is what he said. Pick people likely to move between this age and this salary range and this and this and this. And now Facebook doesn't allow you to do that. So now he says, don't just boost it and Facebook will find the audience period. 
It uh, doesn't allow you to target by a bunch of demographic criteria. They got rid of all of it really? because of the Facebook lawsuit. Um, but yeah, so now you can, Facebook will find the, the basically like the people, so the p first people that engage with your video, either like or comment, Facebook will boost it to more people like them. And that's what you want, people that are watching your content. Um, we talked about taking the buttons off. And then, so make the video post on your business page first, boost it, um, share it to your personal page next. So business page first, share personal. Take a minute or less clip of it, post that on Instagram, and hashtag it to relevant hashtags. Post it to YouTube, um, yeah. And then email the video to your entire database. Take the video and put it inside iMovie, and iMovie will give you an audio file. And then now you have a podcast from your audio file, from all of your videos. And it's all the same content, but like 10 different places and ways. And then a week later, you send it to somebody to create a blog post for you. So in this, he has one video that's on a business page, a boost, a personal page, Instagram, YouTube, email, an audio file for a podcast, and a blog. So nine ways he uses one video. And most of that is free. I mean, the boost, you can either do a free boost or you can do a paid boost. But... Um, that's a lot of different ways to repurpose the same content. And the goal is then, if people don't watch it on Facebook or don't see it, maybe they'll get it in your email or maybe they'll, you know, they'll, they'll find it different ways. But that's the way to, to really get it out there. Um, for videos, he says go to the Crush It! and Real Estate Facebook business page. This is a guy that he coaches. I actually think I pulled something up, but there's a whole bunch on here of, uh, yeah, the, these real estate videos, but you'll notice they're kind of the same formula that he talks about. Um, this was only, I'll, I'll start doing it. Hey everybody, we're talking about the importance of price adjustments and how they come up a lot more this time of the year. I think that July was probably the biggest month of the year to date of price adjustments, and I know that there are many more that are needed market-wide, and that's typical with the market because inventory is higher in the summer, lower in the winter, and it's also the time of year that prices um, tend to be a little higher because sellers are reaching a little bit, right? We talk about that. And so I'm not going to play the whole thing because you can go to the business page, but Crush It Real Estate is one, a guy that he coaches and there's all these different videos in here that are all really good. But, and you can see, I mean, they all have 4.9 thousand views, 3.6 thousand views, 5.4 thousand views. I mean, these are good videos. Like, well, at least they're getting watched, right? And they're not, as you notice, that wasn't scripted. Wasn't anything crazy. There was no overproduced intro that played. It was just him talking on video. And he's boosted, he repurposes it to all the different places that he talked about. Um, but that's the goal, right? Is to take videos that don't cost a lot of money and make them good enough that people wanna watch them and share them to as big of an audience as you can. And then another great video inspiration is Steve Panate here. Um, he has, his videos get great, great views as well. And he's literally gotten clients randomly that he's never met calling him. I watched your videos on Facebook and I want to sell my, I want you to sell my house, you know, so they do work. You just have to commit to it long-term. Um, so now he talked a lot about social media and the new rules in social engagement. So it used to be, you know, try to do things that are different and a little more out of the box. Now blend in to stand out. It's, all changed with the Facebook algorithm. So what, what happened was that Facebook realized everyone was using their personal pages for business, right? They were. So once business pages started losing traction, face people started using their personal pages to promote their business and it started getting too salesy. And actually user engagement was dropping on Facebook and Instagram was going up crazy. So now they changed it. Um, and when they were doing all these studies, What's the difference between Instagram and Facebook? More pictures. Pictures, content, but any other thing? How long it stays there. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, Instagram, they stay there, too. Facebook, like Instagram is just pictures, and you can't really, can't really, um, not pop, but post too much words or whatnot. Correct. What do the pictures do, would you say? So when you look at somebody's, I wish I had my phone. When you go to somebody's Instagram profile and you see the collage of their photos, what does that do? Telling a story. It tells a story. Visually, you can see 
about what that person's like from just from those pictures, right? Or at least you can come to sort of an idea. So they Facebook realized that people care about stories more than about talking, selling, all these other things. So basically, I mean, in, in it, Instagram is prettier. It's, um, you know, you can kind of weed out the noise that was happening in Facebook with all the politics and all the multi-level marketing things and all this stuff. Instagram didn't have any of that. And Instagram interaction engagement was shooting up like crazy and Facebook was going down until Facebook bought Instagram and now they, but what then Facebook changed the algorithm to match more of what Instagram is in that story branding. So you have to shift and that's what we talked about here with this first time home buyer script. So in your Facebook post again, instead of saying, if you're a for, for person, you know, first time home buyer thinking about buying, contact me. Don't say that. Talk about a story about somebody that you helped or, you know, somebody that you could help. Um, relate to them. If you're like most folks, first time home buyers, you're probably afraid and don't trust real estate agents. I get it. I don't like salespeople either. You know, that relates to them. It tells like a story. Either. Yeah. Um, but here, you just have to shift your language more towards story and making deposits without any calls to action. So again, that's where just what Jermaine said was right. Don't say, if you know anybody looking to buy or sell a house, I'm your guy. Don't say that. Just leave it as, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Because that is, you're trying to build a relationship, a long-term relationship. It's like you're, um, you're giving them free information, and they like that because so many times... People, people want don't. something. They want something. Like when they call me on a sign call... If I'm at my computer and it's like too big or too expensive or too whatever it is wrong, I go, well, I'm at my computer and I, you give them the information and they're like, and you don't ask for anything. Blown well, away, right? Then they, then they come to you. They feel like they own you. Exactly right. Law of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly right. <laughs> when you deposit, deposit, deposit to right. people, they feel like right. they've been so helpful, that's I need right. to give back. I have a client that... Um, I did so much for him. He had broken so many HOA rules. And I had <laughs> written to the um, HOA and helped him and did all kinds of stuff. Now he's got a nephew who is a realtor. He's like, you're, you're my realtor. Awesome. And that's and what I you want. my nephew. It's because you, you just give to him. So you're his go-to resource. And that's exactly right. It's because nowadays our industry has become so uh, virtual and less personal yes. um, that the more personal you can be without asking for anything in return that it'll just yeah pay dividends in your business so yeah so without any call to action just I'm here if you need me let me know if you have any questions and then when you, you it's okay to follow up right yeah. because follow up is part of our job but when you follow up it's not a high pressure follow up it's hey just call to see if you have any questions wanted to check in you know, not like, hey, are you still looking to buy a house in the next three to six months? I mean, that's what we were taught. Sales calls, Tom Ferry. It was, hey, get direct to the point questions. It doesn't work anymore. It immediately puts people off. Um, so what you're saying is most important. And they did all these studies. All these big advertising agencies did all these studies. Because there's people literally that spend $100,000 a month on Facebook advertising. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't working. There, it, everything was, wasn't working. So what they learned is... All the old sales bud words, free, blueprint, trip, secrets, this, all these things that people used to say that used to work, it dropped click-throughs by 48%. Because people, those words make people feel like you're selling rather than sharing, telling, giving, which is what you want to sound like. So it really is all about relationship. Totally, always, 100%. Always was. <laughs> and it's going back to that. So it, yeah. and that's 100% right. But... There are more, I mean, now you know, there's way more agents now. So it's about how to keep, you know, nurture those relationships in a way that's going to keep them paying attention to you. And that's really what you want to do with your content. And yeah, the consumer has become numb to ads, don't sell. And it's such, like my example is I have little kids and they like literally don't even notice the ads on YouTube because they're so used to it now, you know, like it's just become such a part of our life and day that on the radio, on our phone, on this, on pop-ups, on retargeting, on websites. You just get bombarded with advertisements all day every day that we don't we don't even we don't even notice because it's just such part of our world now, you know? So don't sell, be different, show value, show that you care, 
you know, really provide a great service and that will stand out. People will notice that. Just like you said, they're like, wow, you know, like when I've had it where grocery stores or whatever, when somebody goes out of their way to help me, or even if it's part of their job, technically, it's like, wow, that was a great employee, you know? Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Customer That's service right. really shines these days. Right. Um, okay, so I know we started late, but I have a little bit more. I'm going to try to wrap, wrap through it. So pro tips for social <coughs> media. Again, oh, story is crushing it. We have affinity to story, but also Instagram stories are crushing it. Does everyone know what Instagram stories are? Okay, so if you don't know what Instagram stories are, use them. Basically, they're posts that disappear, um, kind of like Snapchat. They only stay up for 24 hours. But the idea is, is that you can put, like instead of what I said before, don't overpost content. You can overpost content on stories because it goes away. But so basically your posts should stay relevant, but you can use Instagram stories or Facebook stories to put stuff like where you went to lunch or a new restaurant you tried or all the things and tag the locations, obviously. But um, story is awesome right now. So try it. If you haven't tried Instagram stories, it's really powerful to grow your audience. Now, um, the, your caption on Facebook posts is more important than blog posts, articles, etc. Facebook checks every word, as I said. Um, go in the backdoor parasocial behavior. So basically, if he's talking about like programming people, mm -hmm. and again, by providing value, providing value, providing value, that's all tapping into parasocial behavior, which is different than the consumer messaging that they get every day. Um, you wanna nurture people, educate, demonstrate, inform, and entertain, and that's how long-term relationships are cultivated. Um, if you haven't used video and you're gonna start, he says you have to train your audience, right? You have to get them used to it. So, he said a good way to do so is use brackets in the subject line saying new video. Because if people aren't used to getting videos from you and all of a sudden you do it, if it's a regular subject line, if they've been getting random automated drips, email drips from you that were texts <coughs> that maybe they don't read because they weren't great, um, they're probably going to delete your next email thinking it's another mass automated drip email. So you have to tell them that it's something different that they should pay attention to and a good way to do that is a new video. Um, he also said that this right now is what the most, like, audience growth is happening from on, on social media. So community events and local business interviews are killing it as far as engagement on social media right now. Has anyone done one? Awesome. Can you tell us about it? How did it go? It's, it's going by really good. We've done, we kind of adopted that uh, earlier this year. So we do it like bi-weekly with new, uh, local business or whatever. Awesome. And, um, our videos, we used to do the ones where it's like open house. Yeah, open house, whatever, 60 some views. These ones are getting on average 2,000 to 4,000 views. Um, and we share it to from our business page on like the local press page. Woohoo! Okay, so that, did you hear that? How many, so your videos went from what to what? Uh, less than 100 to over 2,000, 4,000 average. Okay, so that exactly validates what Chat Black coaches and t says. It is the most number one thing for engagement right now because you capture their built-in audience. You leverage the audience that they've already built um, and it creates a referral network as well because you're doing a service for that business owner. Guess who's gonna be their real estate resource? You, because you did something for them, provided value without asking for anything in return. So it's there's a lot of great ways, but Basically, go out and interview local businesses, have their business, yeah, have them post the, the video on their business page, um, and then you can train them how to boost it from their page as well, but you should put it on your page, they should put it on their page, it should be tagged, all that. But basically then, all the people who have liked their vi business, visited their business, all of that, see it, and um, people care about community. That's one thing. It goes back to the whole personal thing. I think we've noticed that a lot more locally here. A lot of the chains are going out of business and more local businesses are opening. Has anyone noticed that? So I am born and raised here. Um, and ever, there was all these chains here as far as restaurants when I was little. I remember all these chain restaurants. And now, I mean, most of them have closed and it's more local owned stuff that's going in, which is awesome. But same thing here. So people care about the community, tap into that by interviewing business owners and provide a value to them and get a bigger audience for yourself. So it's a win-win. Any questions on that? Let's keep people at Walmart. 
True, I guess that's the one chain that's not <laughs> going away. Um, but yeah, so what did what type of businesses have you used it for? Um, anything and everything. Um, local businesses, we done, the last one we did is a rock climbing. We did awesome. about a local liquor deli, which is like a restaurant and a, you know, Dutch Road Coffee. Love it. it there, so. Nail salons, um, hair salons, dry cleaners, mattress stores, local furniture people, dog sitters, cleaning company. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. And then as you're doing this, you're, you're building like a professional vendor resource list as well that you can refer to your people. Um, do you talk about yourself or your business in the videos? It's all there. It's exactly. So I'm glad you said that. So the video, the, they shouldn't be anything about you. Again, you're not selling. You're not asking for anything. The video is all about the business, spotlighting the business owner. You're simply just providing a service to the consumer. Um, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So story branding, I don't know how much more I have here, but I'm gonna, I don't want to keep you guys too long. And if you have to leave, I won't get offended if I know we're going over. Um.